everybody, welcome back to the channel today. So about one week ago, I made a video on the announcement of the Windows 7 extended kernel, and I've been diving deep into the kernel, and it has been amazing to find out everything that can now run on Windows 7 thanks to it. So let me give you guys a brief overview on how this project is working and who's involved. So the main culprit for this project is .exe, if you can't see his name, they're his name, but his name is .exe1338, I think. That's like how his name goes. So as you can see right here, he is currently making patches for the Windows 7 kernel extension. And this has been going on for quite some time. He's been making slow progress on this. He's making slow progress on this project. And it has came along quite nicely. So you can use the kernel add-on right now. So if I bring it up real quick, if I bring this kernel add-on up real quick, let me show you guys the folder for it. Some extended kernel. So here we are right now with the Windows 7 extended kernel. Now I would not recommend the, to download this on on your on your main PC just yet. Actually, well, I mean, here's the thing: it's kind of hit or miss. This will not work if you have any ESU updates installed. And most ISOs that are made in 2023 and up include all the ESU patches. So if you wanted to use this this kernel add-on, you would have to find a ISO that does not have any of the ESU updates. Because if you install any of the ESU updates, it just won't work. Trust me, I tried it; it wrecked my whole PC. That there went my whole entire Saturday. I had to reinstall Windows. But if we come into here, we can see all the past files that have been made. So these are are files that break compatibility with most software. So say for example, if we were, so let me show you guys something real quick. A piece of software that we were able to get up and running, or that, I'll kind of say I was able to get up and running with some properties from the Windows 7 extended kernel. I'm sure it was Rufus. Actually, no, uh, it was my Xbox emulator. So this is a, a thing for the Windows 7 IG extended kernel. Let me extract all, extract. Just do this again so you guys can see it without any patches. So this emulator allows me to play Xbox games on a PC. So if I try to run this right now, it works. And that is because I have the kernel add-on enabled. So there are two programs for this. There's one called this, VexKex. So this was a project that actually came out around one year ago, but it is now being updated again by the person. I'll have to find his name, but he is also on the server for the Windows 7 kernel add-on, so I'll have to find his name. But he has made more progress on this in the last two to three months, and it has allowed for a lot of software to run. So if we turn off VexKex and we try to if we try to run this program again, we can see we are having this error right here. This program could not start because API MS WinCore path 1 slash 1.0 DLL is not recognized on your PC. And if we go to the folder where the where the kernel add-on is, let me find that real quick, under 7 extended kernel system, we can see that 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 file is right here in the Windows 7 ig the it's 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 in the Windows 7 kernel add-on. So .exe has a lot more files than the other project. Keep in mind that the project that I that I that I am using right now came out in 2022. So it doesn't have a, a lot of files, but I'm telling you, once it gets updated again, it's going to include all these patches to where you will not have to need the actual like you won't need to change your whole kernel to run things, but you'll definitely be able to run more with this than you would with VexKex. So right now I'm using VexKex because I would have to install Windows 7 again, but the main thing is .exe is actually trying to make it to where you can run the kernel add-on with ESU. He said it would be ready by October 2025. Let me see if I can find where he said that in here. 25 so he has a ISO in here that doesn't, that doesn't have any ESU updates, but I prefer to use my ESU updates because it makes my PC more secure. So I prefer having those updates installed on my computer. So there are a lot of things in this project. So I, just, I, I just want to show you guys a few things that have been done with these modified APIs. So this is something I feel like is very badass. 
you can run the latest version of Brave, or not the latest, but you can run a very modern version of Brave with the help of APIs from the Windows 7 kernel add-on. So this isn't made by .exe, but this is made by someone else who's in the who's also in the server that was able to fork Brave. So there's been a lot of web browsers to get up and running with these APIs. So we have Chrome 120 with Brave, then we have Win32's web browser, which I've I've talked about a lot on this channel before, which runs the almost a very modern build of Chrome. It runs Chrome 121. It's probably going to be updated to Chrome 122 in the next two weeks. So there's been a lot of things to get up and running on this on this. But here's the main thing that I feel like it's just like this is like the main thing that is just amazing to me. So if we come over here, let me go to my game file quick where I have. Counter-Strike installed, CS2, let me search for it real quick, so CS2, so it's going to take a while to find it, I'll be back when it does, alright, so we are at the file location for Counter-Strike 2 right now, so this game does not work on, on Windows 7 by default, so if we come over here, properties, VexKex, I have VexKex enabled for this program, or I did have VexKex enabled for this program, but I turns it off just to to show you guys it so the game does not run without vex kicks if we try to run counter-strike 2 right now the game will launch but it tends to crash after about five to ten seconds so it will launch right now but it will crash soon so i will be back when it crashes all right so i am back the game crashed but if I go back to it and I use the, I so I can't play the game, Rails OBS would probably crash because I don't have any error theme enabled. So hardware acceleration is not working right now. I have to have the theme disabled so OBS can actually run properly. So report a difference. So yeah, you actually don't need VexKex for this. So you don't need any any um, m m m modified APIs. All you need is just report a different version of report a different version of Windows and put it as Windows 10 or 11 and the game runs smoothly. It runs better on 7 than 10 and 11. So there's a artificial block for Counter-Strike 2 that is active. So all you have to do is just report a different version of Windows and put it to 10 or 11 and the game runs fine. So to me this is the biggest thing for the API files, things like that. This is the hugest, the hugest plus in my opinion, for me at least, because I use 10 for two games or three games the finals counter-strike 2 and fortnite so i now have to boot into windows 10 less because counter-strike 2 now runs on windows 7 which is a huge plus for me because the game actually runs better on my hardware i have a 1080 ti and a 3900x and it actually runs around 30 to 40 fps better at the same settings with my hardware which is quite interesting to me because it really shows how unoptimized stock windows 10 is so let me show you guys some more software that has been up and running with the thing. So let me go back to it, releases or software compatibility, things like that. We can see some software in here that has been up and running. So this guy got Fusion 360 up and running with VexX. Now here's the biggest thing too, is the guy who made the kernel add-on was actually able to get BattleBit remastered up and running on Windows 7, but there is a slight caveat is the anti-cheat does not work. And I feel like that's the biggest issue we're going to have with getting games up and running. It's not going to be that the games don't work. It's going to be that the anti-cheat does not does not work well with the extended kernel. And that kind of goes back to running games with Proton and all things like that. It's going to have a hard time with anti-cheat. The, game, the games themselves are going to be able to run. It's just the anti-cheats are going to be complete dog shit. So this means that we can probably get a lot of games, a lot of games that you don't play online, could probably run under Windows 7 in the future. So that's a good plus. So I even talked to this guy right here. What work? Yeah, I see I'll have to research it further. So let's try Wintrust. So this guy's actually been finding a way to make the anti-cheat think it's on Windows 10. 
And this would be huge if we can get anti-cheat and games to work on Windows 7. Because it would mean you can play every game on Windows 7. The only issue I could see with that is out-of-date graphics card drivers. But knowing how this community is, I would not be surprised if someone ported a 539 driver to Windows 7. I really would not be with how involved this community is. I really would not be at all. So let's go up here a tiny bit more. So as we can see, this was my find. Brave 120, not a lot of people were talking about it, so I gave the guy his props. So that's how I got my emulator up and running as well. And you're also gonna get able to get the latest version of Rufus up and running on Windows 7. The last version of, of Rufus to run on Windows 7 was 3.9. You're now able to run version 4.4. Uh, 4. Let's see. And this guy also makes cracks for Modern I also showed this guy in my Windows 7 2024 survival guide. But he's been making more things. He's now making Edge, Oprah, Brave. And this is where the Brave Fork, the Brave Fork comes from and, and Spotify. So, so this guy's more involved now because he's now making Oprah, Brave, and Spotify. So huge plus to that dude. So we also got... Handbrake up and running on Windows 7, the latest version of it. And this is my personal favorite right here, OBS 29 for Windows 7. So the last version to work was OBS 20, OBS 27, and it was good, but it was getting quite outdated at that point. And we are now able to run the, I want to say latest, but it is pretty modern. It came out within the last eight months, so I would consider it pretty modern. And this is a huge perk for me. You're able to run the latest version of VS Code on Windows 7. I do a lot of projects for coding. I make websites. I'm pretty good at making websites. So this is a pretty big plus for me because I'm now able to do all of my work, all of my day-to-day -day tasks in Windows 7 without needing to boot into Windows 10. So this is everything that I have gotten up and running. There's probably a lot more things that you can get up and running on Windows 7, but these two projects have definitely given this OS new life. And this is honestly very good to see because the, because with these OSs, the community is more involved than it ever has been with XP, Vista, things like that. When those OSs, when when they when they were EOL'd, they died slowly after. Not Windows 7. In my opinion, this OS has gotten better since Microsoft ended support for it. Not to mention, you can get security updates until 2024 with ESU and Server 2008 updates. So there's not really any risk, in my opinion, of running this OS, if you're up to date, that is. I would not recommend running this OS with updates only up till 2020, because there has been a lot of things that come out in the past four years that could be used to uh, have a attack on your PC. But the main thing is, is just having a ad block using a, a up-to-date web browser. I would not use Chrome 109 at all. I would recommend a, a version of Chrome based off either 120 or 121 because those are more up to date and have way better security features but yeah that's everything that has been able to be up and running with the kernel add-on i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one